Hi, everyone. Welcome to History 103 for the summer semester of 2020. I'm your instructor. I'm Patrick O'Brien, Dr. Patrick O'Brien, but please uh, feel free uh, to just call me Pat or Dr. Pat or Professor, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, I'm excited to teach the course again this summer. Uh, I have been teaching online courses at Columbia College um, for three summers now. I also taught in-person face-to-face classes at CC um, back a couple of years ago. I'm coming to you live uh, from beautiful, actually it's quite rainy right now, but normally beautiful, um, Naples, Florida. I'm currently a visiting assistant professor of history at Ave Maria University, which is just outside of uh, Naples here in sunny Southwest Florida. It's funny because when I moved to Columbia, South Carolina years ago, I thought that that would be the furthest south I'd ever move. But look at me now, here I am uh, in Southern Florida. Although when I was here in January and February, trust me, I was not complaining. Um, a bit of my background, I am uh, from uh, New Jersey. I went to um, Providence College for my undergraduate where I majored in history and sociology. I then went on to receive a master's degree at McGill University in Montreal in American history. I taught for two years after that at the high school level in Brooklyn, New York, where I taught 10th grade world history uh, and 12th grade government and economics before continuing on to study uh, a doctorate degree in history, in American history at the University of South Carolina, which is what brought me uh, to Columbia in 2014. I graduated uh, the summer of 2019, so almost a year ago now. Uh, I studied women, uh, American colonial women during the American Revolution, I'm particularly interested in women who sided with um, the British during the American Revolution. These people are often called the Loyalists. I'm interested in Loyalist women, uh, especially those who fled the American colonies, the American states, uh, for protection under the British to places like Nova Scotia. I'm very interested in learning how these women impacted uh, these refugee communities and how these women led their families, uh, many of them back to the American states after peace uh, was reached in 1783. So uh, my specialty is in American history, but I've taught classes in uh, modern European history, in global history like this one, uh, and both sides of American history, early and, and more modern American history, as well as the development of Western civilization. So I've got a pretty broad teaching background um, that I'm going to work with to, to bring this class and hopefully make it useful to all of you. I know it's a requirement, um, so perhaps there are some people out there who are interested in history. Perhaps there are some people who are thinking, ugh, more history. Um, I think you'll both be excited by what this class can offer. It's not just for people who love history. Uh, I'm hoping to make it relevant and useful uh, for all of you, uh, regardless in what it is you study, because I am very passionate about the idea that understanding what's made our modern world, uh, whether they be um, uh, societal structures, right, economic structures, political structures, uh, all of these different um, structures that really govern how our world works are very important. And I think if we can understand where some of these come from, we can better assess the world around us, which I think as we see today uh, is incredibly important uh, to understand how our world was made. Because once you understand um, how these different structures work together, how they were created, perhaps you can better uh, assess which of them are valuable and which of them could probably use a little bit of reforming. Um, so I'll give you a little of my background there and what I believe. I created two videos. Uh, this is the first one, and this video is meant to help walk you through both our Canvas page and explain to you how to access the textbook. In a second video, which I will also post, um, I'm going to talk you a little bit more through Launchpad, which is the online interface from Macmillan Publishers that goes along with our textbook. Um, the first thing you should know is that uh, textbook's totally free. It's included with your tuition, so you don't need to pay for anything. Uh, Launchpad access and the textbook, the ebook, are totally free to you. And I'm going to show you how to access those in this video after I walk through our syllabus very briefly, introduce you briefly to Canvas. I will tell you how to get access to the ebook and how to register uh, through Canvas to Launchpad. If you're someone who's interested in a hard copy of the text, uh, some people out there might say to themselves, listen, I learned much better from hard copy text, um, send me an email. I can tell you how to get that, but of course you're gonna have to pay out of pocket for that. So I don't know if I anticipate uh, very many emails. So let me just show you. I'm gonna click here uh, into our classes Canvas page. You'll notice I'm only teaching one class. Some of you might have other classes available, um, but this is our courses Canvas page. When you come in here, there's a couple of things that aren't visible to students yet. Um, this is the instructor view, so yours is going to look a little bit different. And let me open up student view so you can see exactly what you can see right now. 
more things will become available as we get a bit closer uh, to class. But so the first thing that you might want to do, and I sent this instructions out uh, via an announcement a little bit earlier, but is take a look at our syllabus. So let me pull up our syllabus here. Oh, shucks. Uh, here we go. I haven't saved it with any titles. So when we pull up our syllabus, you're going to notice a couple things. You might actually it might start like this for you. It might start quite small. Uh, just feel free to zoom it in. I wanted to use these neat little syllabus creators to make it much more visually friendly. This is an online class, right? So we need to be visually friendly um, syllabus for you. So uh, this is our syllabus. You can read through the course description. You can read through our class objectives. You'll notice that uh, we are online. So if we're going to hold office hours, they need to be virtually. Uh, luckily, I've gotten very proficient over this last semester of all the craziness at holding virtual office hours via Zoom. So if you're someone who's saying, listen, email, I can't, can't get across what I want to say to you in email or I'm not really quite understanding, let me know. We can set up uh, virtual office hours via Zoom where we can talk uh, like this uh, a little bit more freely about any questions you have. Now, what do I put next? I put the most important aspect next. What's due each week? What I've learned from teaching online classes is uh, a very simple kind of lesson. That in order for an online class to be successful, we have to have repetition. That is, it's most successful if what's due one week is also due every other week. So you learn exactly what's expected of you in week one, and then through week eight, it's basically just repetition of what you've learned. And that's how I set it up. So every week, you have the same things due. In addition, you're also having two other papers that are due on different Fridays uh, this summer, which I've got laid out to you in just a moment. Um, but for the most part, you have five things due every week. You have a primary source discussion post, which I'll talk a little bit about. You have textbook readings. You'll be required to watch lectures. You'll also have launchpad assignments, both learning curves and summative quizzes. I'll talk about that in a moment. And each week, you also have a one to two page weekly response paper, where I'll pose to you a prompt, and then you are to submit a one to two page double spaced um, size 12 font response to that. Um, so that's what's due every week. In addition to two papers, that's your entire grade. Uh, there's no sit down midterm, no sit down final. Uh, instead, we work off of the submissions that are um, throughout the summer. And I'll show you how they're weighted in just a moment. How to succeed. Now, this is something I can't emphasize to you enough. There are some people in this class who are Columbia College students and they're juniors and seniors. They've taken online classes before. There are incoming freshmen. This might be their first time taking a college course and it might be their first online course. And there are also people who have been out of school for a bit, who are coming back uh, to get a degree. And this might be your first course or second course, but we bring together a lot of different people. No matter who you are, these four steps uh, will help you succeed in this class. First and foremost, you need to stay on top of your work. If you fall behind, you know, deadlines are every week, Friday at 5 p.m. If you miss those deadlines, you know, unfortunately it's late. So you really can't kind of uh, fall behind on your work. And it's gonna be nearly impossible for you to miss a whole week and then try to catch up in the course. Um, you know, weekly participation is very important. So you need to stay on top of your work and I'll actually jump ahead. And that means I think you need to make and revise a plan pretty frequently. The first week I understand is a learning curve, you know, everyone's going to be on kind of a different page. But after the first week, you'll kind of get a feel for how the class operates. So that by week two, you'll be more comfortable. By week three, you should be full steam ahead. Um, so you want to make and revise a plan after week one uh, to see what works for you. You need to submit your best work. Uh, because we don't have face-to-face -face interaction, I can't say like, hey, they're a really great student, they're trying really hard. Uh, I'm only able to judge you on what you submit. So read a little bit about how to submit your best work. And fortunately, that top part's gonna be very easy. Get the textbook early, you'll be able to do that at the end of this video. So don't worry about it. Here's the textbook information, but I will walk you through exactly how to get through that. Here are some of our key dates. We start class on June 1st. Um, our first paper, which I haven't assigned yet, but I will make the assignment for very soon, is due June 26th, there's a week-long break, then there's another paper due on July 29th, and our last day of class is the following day, uh, July 30th, uh, where we'll have material due. Here's the breakdown of your grade. The primary source discussions are 10%, the learning curve and the quizzes, both of those are done on Launchpad, walk through those in a minute, are 10% each. Paper one is worth 15%, paper two is worth a little bit more. I'm gonna give everyone feedback, so I hope you're able to use my feedback to improve your analysis. For paper two, and that's why paper two is worth slightly more. And then your weekly responses, which are worth uh, 35%. So, you know, missing one of those weekly responses, there's only eight total, uh, can do significant damage to your grade. So please stay on top of your work. And you can see a uh, scoring break down here. What follows then is a list of assignments that are due for each week. Uh, you'll notice that I 
expect you to complete some things during the week and then what's due? Well, every Friday, like I said, you've got the primary source post, you've got the launch pad material, you're required to have read the text, to watch the lectures, and submit that weekly response. Uh, five things. And you'll notice that I might make some additions to what uh, I want you to watch or watch you, want you to read, but everything's pretty well balanced and none of the major submissions are going to change. So you can take a look at uh, what I've got planned out for you. Perhaps most importantly on here are the textbook pages I expect you to read. Um, so please pay attention to that. And let's talk a little bit more about how to get access to that textbook right now. So here we are back on our canvas. What I want you to do in order to get access to the textbook is go right here to this helpful material to prepare for class module. And the first thing you want to do is this uh, video right here, instructions to pair Canvas and Launchpad. So if you click that, it'll open up an outside link for you. And this outside link includes a quick little video for you to watch. I think it's only two to three minutes. Come down here and click this link, connect your Canvas account. It'll skip you ahead a little bit. And you can watch this brief, I think it's two minutes, 30 seconds, three minute video on how to link Canvas to Launchpad. So you can watch that, you can read the step-by-step -step instructions down here, or you can just pay quick attention uh, to what I suggest you do. The best way to link your Launchpad and your uh, Canvas account is to click one of our learning curve assignments uh, or our summative quizzes, something from Launchpad. So if you click this learning curve page, it will take you, well, you have to click this to open an outside window, but once you do that, you'll come right here. That will give you uh, an ability to register uh, for the textbook. This is not what it looks like. I don't know why it's telling me this error. It's probably because I'm a sample student, not a real student. But once you uh, click that outside window, as the uh, video will show you right here, uh, once you watch that video about how to access and link, it'll walk you through what you do. But basically, once you click that learning curve, uh, and it'll open up this outside window, it'll bring you to a page where you can enter your information. Be sure to enter the same uh, email that you use for Canvas as the email address to link uh, Launchpad. It's not necessary, but I highly recommend it. It just makes your life uh, exponentially easier. So once I get out of Leave Student View, I'll show you what that Launchpad site work looks like. So if you go over here to Macmillan Learning, another easy way to access our Launchpad is click this Macmillan Learning and then click this Launchpad right here. Uh, it'll take you to what our Launchpad site looks like and I've got a whole nother video to walk you through this uh, so don't worry about it. We'll see that in a minute but if you come back here what's most important to you after you've registered which you can do by clicking these and entering your information linking to Canvas you can click this ebook which brings you uh, right here to the side tab of Launchpad uh, to view the ebook. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it's not loading for you, um, but it's it's very simple to do. Uh, I've never had any problems. I'm just going to go home for a quick minute because this will be easy to do it. You click this ebook in the side panel, and of course, it won't let me actually show you. So I'm just going to go do it another way because I have a lot of practice with this. The first chapter we're reading uh, is chapter 13. So you'll notice if we go back uh, to our syllabus for just a moment. The first uh, reading assignment that you're doing for week one is um, we are looking at chapter 13, so pages 538 to 580, and you can easily access that here. Look, here you go, introduction to chapter 13. If you click this right here, look at that. I don't know why that other ebook tab was not working, but it'll open up uh, this ebook available for you. You'll notice that we actually have to go back a couple pages to 538. You can just type those in here to navigate 538 and you'll be able to uh, begin reading through and you'll see the pages change up top when you need to actually change pages to get more available. Just hit next and it'll walk you through uh, the different materials here. It'll show you the pages uh, to make sure you're reading the uh, proper page assignment. So um, the textbook should be pretty easy for you once you've got access to it. Uh, I'm going to have a whole other video that walks you through all this other stuff on Launchpad because there's a whole lot more uh, including what's going to be expected of you down here, our learning curves and summative quizzes, which are also due on um, Launchpad's site here. But the key for this video was just teaching you how to get access to the, um, to the textbook. And just a quick summary, come down here, pick either one of these learning curve or summative quiz assignments, or come up here to Macmillan Learning and click the um, Launchpad and enter your information there. Make sure to check out the other video and we'll be back soon.